All right, it is five o'clock on Friday, and the plan is to get the hull of this boat painted and so it can go in the water tomorrow, Saturday. Um, so it means I've got two hours to get everything done before the sun sets. First thing I've got to do is tape the paint line, I'm gonna put acetone, acetone the hull, and I get my paint out, roller, respirator. Uh, I think I'm gonna wear these clothes because I don't care if they get paint on them. All right, we're starting to get set up. I've got all the products out I'm gonna be using. First of all, acetone and rags. First step, wipe the old paint with acetone. Uh, I also have some good gloves, seven millimeter thick gloves because the acetone will eat through the gloves. The next step is blue painter's tape to tape the paint line with. Get a nice, smooth, and clean line. All right, moving on. We have VC-17. VC-17, I think, is like a religion in the Great Lakes. Uh, everyone uses it at races and sails. Uh, it's not, it's, I heard it's not so good in salt water. If you've ever worked with VC-17, you know it evaporates very quickly, almost as you're using it. So somebody showed me a trick about putting it in what well, he said a plastic bottle but I'm going to use a glass peanut butter jar and seal the jar so the paint isn't evaporating as you're using it and just use small amounts. Next I have the paint pan I use. I've got the West Marine foam 7 inch roller. This is what everyone seems to recommend to use with VC-17. I got a paint stick, some chip brushes, Last but not least, I've got my full face respirator. I don't want to breathe this stuff. I don't want to get it on my skin. Um, I think any respirator would be fine. This is just what I have, so what, it's what I use. So the first step will be to tape the paint line. Okay, I have found that it's easiest to start at the bow of the boat and work my way back. Um, the trick of taping the paint line on the boat is not to let the tape rip. So what I Basically the technique is I roll a long strip out with my left hand and then use my right hand just to smooth it over and make sure it goes right along the line that I want. If it's not, I just kind of peel it back and just redo it. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's move on to the stern. The stern is one of the hardest places on the boat to tape. The tape will want to wrinkle as you go around the radius of the stern. I will use small pieces of tape just to go over any areas that do wrinkle so that way the paint line stays clean and you get a good result when we're done. Alright, that's looking good. So the next step is to cover the propeller and all the metal objects. One thing you don't want to do with VC-17 or any bottom paint for that matter is get it on anything that's metal that's underwater. Uh, the copper and the VC-17 paint will react so when you paint, just make sure all your underwater metals are covered real well so you don't get any paint on them. All right, we're moving right along with this project. Check it out, let's see where I'm at. I've got paint line or water line taped. Um, each side, this is just one long piece of tape. Uh, it helps not to rip the tape and it'll make it easier to take off later. Um, I've also placed a tarp under the boat to keep as much paint as possible from getting on the ground. I don't spill that much, but it always helps and I have the tarp, so why not? Okay, so the next step, get gloves on, get the respirator on, take acetone and wipe the VC-17, hit it with acetone. So it's 5.40, hopefully I'll be done by seven. That's the goal. So an hour and 20 minutes left, acetone and paint, do it. This process is really pretty simple. You just soak your rig in acetone and just wipe the boat. Extra acetone evaporates, it's simple. Uh, if you notice the VC-17, the graphite, Kind of dissolves in the acetone and then sometimes it'll look you know the copper look will come back and then your gray gets full of the graphite uh, you just keep refolding the rig and using more clean sections all right so i acetone the boat um wearing wearing my full face respirator you can probably see the value of this because you're often working underneath you and you definitely don't want anything dripping into your eyes a lot of people use the uh, partial face respirator and safety glasses. I've found with that, every time I exhale, my glasses fog up, and that is ridiculously frustrating. With this, you never get fogged up. You never have to worry about getting stuff in your eyes and your face. Um, I like it. Uh, again, 
One of the best things I've ever bought. VC-17. These are what the cans look like. Let me show you what you get. You just pop this top off. All right, so that's it. And this, this can is probably only full about up to here. So I've heard people buy this and take it back because they say they bought a half full can. It's like, no, you're just not understanding what it is. And the red part, you get directions. And you get a bag of copper powder. This is really what makes this paint is this copper powder. This is extremely nasty, just toxic stuff. So you don't want to breathe it. You don't want to get it around you. So that's that. Let me get my roller out. I usually try and go fast when I do this because if it's warm out, this stuff will evaporate as fast as you use it. Today it's about 50 degrees, so I think that's a good temperature to do this in. All right, my roller is not as big as my roller cover, so we're gonna go on all the way there. We'll have a bit that sticks out, that should be fine. There's really not much to shake in here. All right, so, gloves. Um, sometimes I'll use the scissors. I've got a knife, open the bag. I kind of, this powder kind of feels like, feels like a bag of like slime or grease or something. It doesn't feel like a solid or powder thing in here. All right, new pair of gloves. Cause as you see, my hands are a little dirty. The acetone will eat through these gloves. All right, you don't want to get the powder on you. You don't want to breathe it. So my plan, I guess I am going to try this jar method just because I have it, even though it's not very hot out and evaporation shouldn't be too much of a problem. All right, so we'll open the can carefully. All right, so without the powder, this is kind of like a clear looking liquid. Uh, there's really no color. This is the original. You can get it in red or black, I think. Alright, so, we'll cut the bag open. Alright. So now, a little bit at a time, we'll dump the co copper dust in the can. I'm upwind of it, so I'm not breathing it. Mix. I'm not mixing super fast because I don't want this copper to go all over. Kind of bubbles. Another reason I like the idea of using a, a glass mason jar is because as this this copper sits in the paint can after a while, it all settles to the bottom. You're constantly remixing it. So I think I'll put some in the pan to start with, and then I'll put the rest in the, the old the peanut butter mason jar, and then put the cap on, and then I can just shake it when I want to use more. Alright, so I've read that the technique for VC-17 paint for rolling it is to start the lowest point on your boat, paint on your roller, start at the bottom, and one roll up. And don't re-roll or go over your your area a second time. That's not easy to do. I'll do the best I can, but I always go over a couple areas a couple times and that, I don't know. And it always seems like it goes on too thick when you do that, but this paint is very watery, dries very fast. And it's still mixing. Still got a little more left. And again, I'm this is blowing away from me, so. Don't breathe the copper powder. Don't get it on you. Don't get it on anything. All right, put that aside. Keep mixing. So this is a pretty real-time presentation of how long it takes to mix this paint.
Yeah, we're just about getting there. And this is me in a hurry, too. It's nice because it's not super windy. There's just a little bit of a breeze. There we go. We got this copper liquid. It's still clumpy. I don't care. I mean, maybe if you're that concerned, you can mix it more. Maybe once I put it in the mason jar and shake it, that'll go away. But again, I don't care. There's always some thick spots in the bottom. Mix it a little bit more. <sighs> All right. Um... Respirator, hat, pour some in here, and away I go. Let's get to it. All right, let's start painting. I have some paint in my pan, and let's start bottom, roll up. That's the technique for this paint. Start at the bottom, roll up. Move halfway the next section, roll up again. You don't want to roll down or re-roll the paint more than once. It's not easy to do. Sometimes it always seems too thick, and for some reason I always want to go through it a second time. All right, let's try this peanut butter jar trick. This is a lot easier to just shake this can and unscrew the cover than it is to seal a paint can, get a screwdriver, unseal it, mix it, and pour it. This is going to save me a lot of time. I really like this. All right, it's nice to have a bucket or somewhere to sit when I do the low areas on the boat. Saves your back. Uh, now is when you can really see the value of the full face mask and the hat because you're often painting things above you and stuff can easily splatter in your face or in your eyes. So with this mask, I don't need to worry about that. this one more time just shake the peanut butter jar mix up all that copper unscrew the cap and pour some more paint into the pan simple I really like this trick all right it is seven o'clock exactly I just finished I'm done rolling out all the paint see the lovely copper color new VC 17 paint my nice clean line Okay, I'm going to wait to take the tape off because I did one more coat of paint on this whole area that kind of becomes the scum line. So that has a little bit thicker layer. Um, I also do a second layer of VC-17 along the leading edge of the keel. I do a little bit more on the rudder always just because those are the areas that seem to wear out quicker. Also, the, the keel, this very bottom of the boat, always seems to wear pretty quickly. Got about another inch, inch and a half left in the peanut butter jar or the mason jar. That should be plenty to paint under these pads, paint the bottom of the keel when the boat's in the air, but all in all looks pretty good. It's seven o'clock, done. And I'm gonna wait another couple minutes and take the paint, take the tape off, cause like I said, I just put another layer of paint on so that's a little wet. And it's like 50 degrees, so you get a little more time. I have to say the peanut butter jar trick for the VC-17, awesome. Thank you, random guy I met at Yadapalooza in Chicago. That is the best tip ever. I like the idea of doing it in a glass jar better than a plastic squeeze bottle, just because I know the VC-17 won't melt the glass. But yeah, definitely. I gotta get a paint roller that is the same size as the seven inch foam rolls. Um, keep the roller on the outside, not the inside, because this way I can get to areas a lot better. It's exciting. Yeah, there's something exciting about seeing this, this fresh paint every year. So anyways, tomorrow I'll come, take the chip brush, get in some small areas, and then the boat's going in the water. All right, I couldn't resist. I took the tape off. It's quarter after seven, seven twelve. So two hours and 12 minutes. But look at that. It is nice, clean line. There's a little bit of white. Um, uh, there's a few imperfections. Here's one. There. All right, I got a few little imperfections like that. I don't care, I'm happy with the way it turned out. That's one of the joys of having your own boat and not working on a customer's boat, because I can say that's awesome and be happy with it, because I did it. It's not gonna be perfect, this boat's 30 years old. All right, but look at that. Look at how good that turned out. Beautiful. Beautiful, ready to splash in the morning. Uh, still need to take the tape off the prop and the shaft. Still need to put the new anode on. You can do that tomorrow. I'm tired, I've worked, I did this. 
All right, good night.